Hello there and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I've got this HP ProDesk 600G4 SFF, which is really similar to the computer that I just featured in my last video. But fear not, this video is not another video of turning an old office PC into a great budget screen capture rig, and instead, this is a video on fixing this computer because it's completely busted and won't turn on at all. So today, let's see if I can fix it and end up with a decent deal on a pretty solid computer. The system should have 8GB of RAM, no SSD, and most importantly, an Intel Core i5-8500. The 8500 is a very interesting chip that I plan to dive into more in a future video, as it's relatively available, and it's the first i5 that Intel created with 6 cores. Ideally, I'm able to get this computer running again so that I can use it in this future video, so let's start out by recreating the problem. I plug the system in and press the power button, expecting the computer not to turn on at all. Unsurprisingly, it didn't power up, but what was weird was that the hard drive activity indicator light flashed alongside the power button, as if the power button turned the light on and off directly. This was immediately quite disconcerting to me, because the fact that this light illuminated at all meant that the system had power of some sort. Although this could be fully driven by standby power, and the power supply could still be at fault, I feared that this was a much more likely sign of something like a corrupt BIOS or a dead motherboard. This meant that my next step was to open up the computer and see how much life was really left in the unit. I did this by pulling out both 4GB sticks of RAM that came installed in the system, and then I attempted to power it up with no RAM installed. Obviously, this system shouldn't boot up, but it should tell me that it's very unhappy through some beeps if it's not completely dead. With power applied, the power button was unresponsive outside of the hard drive LED activity as was seen before. However, while I was repositioning the system to get a better shot, it suddenly turned on. The CPU fan spun up, and after a few seconds, I got several beeps out of the computer, indicating its anger at having no RAM installed. Knowing that the system does have some life left in it, I proceeded with my troubleshooting by putting in a single stick of DDR4 RAM that I keep on hand and know is perfectly good, just to rule out the stock RAM as an issue, because I'm still not too sure what's going on. After applying power again, the power button didn't work for a bit, but then eventually the system turned on after about 30 seconds or so. The PC power cycled a few times, but never sent a video signal out of its onboard DisplayPort outputs. I also switched from using DisplayPort to using one of the VGA outputs on the computer to make sure that it wasn't having an issue where the BIOS wouldn't display out of the DP outputs, like on some 7th and 8th gen Dell units. Sadly, the fix wasn't this simple, and the computer still refused to display anything out of its VGA port even after letting it sit for a while. After moving my DIMM to a different slot, I tried waiting to power the system on for about 30 seconds, and after this, I pressed the power button, to which it was perfectly responsive. So by this point, I'm noticing a bit of a pattern in the way that the power button for this system is working, and that is that it will only respond after the system has been plugged into power for about 30 to 45 seconds. Looking online, finding exact replications of this behavior wasn't very promising. There are basically no accounts online of something similar to this being known as standard behavior, a broken motherboard, damaged BIOS, or anything. I found one account of someone with the same issue, but it ended up leading to nothing useful at all. At this point, I was pretty confident that the problem the system was experiencing wasn't related to its memory, and so I moved on to the other obvious parts on this system that I could easily test. The first of which being the CMOS battery. I pulled the CMOS battery out of the motherboard and plugged it into my CMOS battery tester, which I have a video on how to build on my channel, and it came back with a reading of 0 volts. After replacing the battery with a new one, which read right around 3 volts, I didn't observe any change to the power button's behavior, and the system still refused to post. At this point, I'm honestly really confused about what could be the main problem with this computer. The CMOS battery was bad, but fixing that didn't change the main problem. It doesn't seem like a memory issue due to the nature of it and the fact that new RAM didn't fix it, and I highly doubt a CPU failure, both due to the way that the system is behaving and the fact that CPU failures are the least common failure in PCs. Although the power supply seems to be okay due to the fact that the fans spin up and the system seems to behave normally outside of the lack of a display output, I figured that I might as well pull it out of the system and give it a check. This HP unit doesn't fit my custom PSU tester that I built a while ago, but thankfully testing a power supply like this with a standard multimeter isn't that hard of a thing to do. I plugged the power supply into power and prodded around to look for any standby power, but everything looked pretty normal. 
So I used a wire to trigger the power supply to turn on so that I could measure the main outputs and make sure that they were in spec. This unit tested good as it powered on exactly as it should have and the main outputs jumped up to 12 volts. So I highly doubt that this power supply is at fault for the issues that are happening. However, it could theoretically be providing unstable power under load, causing the system to fail its post sequence. So it's only 99% written off at this point. But that means that for the time being, I'm going to move on to other suspects such as the motherboard, CPU, and in particular, the motherboard's BIOS. First, because it was easy for me to do, I pulled the Core i5-8500 CPU out of this computer and put it into another PC that I had laying around just to ensure it wasn't the culprit. Unsurprisingly, this CPU booted right up in the other system and I could mark another thing off of the list of potential suspects. This left me with one more main target and that was the motherboard. Now, due to the way that this motherboard has been behaving so far, I'm very hesitant to say that this board is completely dead due to some failure that's beyond my skill level to repair or is not worth repairing. In fact, I really think that this motherboard might have a corrupted BIOS, and therefore, I want to try a BIOS flash with it before calling it dead and ordering a new one, which I would only be comfortable doing because a new one costs a mere $17. And so, I got my hot air soldering station out and desoldered the BIOS chip from the motherboard so that I could reflash it with a fresh image of the BIOS. I soldered it to a small breakout board that I could plug into my BIOS programmer, and after all that, I was able to read the chip's contents with the BIOS programmer's software. I then saved this image so that I could revert to it in a worst case scenario, and then I downloaded the newest version of the BIOS for this computer. I then sent the new BIOS image to the flash chip through the programmer, but sadly, after soldering the chip back onto the motherboard, I booted the system up and was greeted with the same issues as before, weird power behavior, and no post. So, being somewhat stumped on this issue at this point, I chose to move forward with replacing the motherboard. I went onto eBay and was able to find a matching replacement board that only cost me $17.50 after tax, shipping, and everything. So it ended up being a pretty good deal. Once the new board had arrived, I installed it into the computer, and when trying to boot it up for the first time, I was suddenly very concerned because the power button was doing the same weird thing that it had been doing before. However, I chose to look past this issue temporarily, and I let the system get to the point where it would spin up its fans and start to power on but there was still no post. Now, I was plugged into the DisplayPort output at this time because it's the most convenient way to hook up my monitor, but knowing that sometimes computers are weird about posting to their DisplayPort outputs when there are VGA outputs available, I chose to do what I had done before with the old board and plug in a VGA cable as well. And this is where I met sweet success. I had managed to get a display out of the system, it just happened to need a VGA cable and a new motherboard. Thankfully, I did try this on the old board and still got nothing, meaning that I didn't mess up and buy a new board when all I needed was to use VGA. The old board definitely still had some problems, although I'm not completely sure what they were. This one was definitely a bit more confusing of a repair. It seems now that I have installed Windows on this system, the power button's behavior is probably just the way that it is on this model, but it's annoying that I can't find any good documentation on this. So I'm just going to say that the power button behavior is normal, as far as I'm aware, and that this broken motherboard was just a no post motherboard out of any of its video outputs. Well, that's all that I have for you in today's video. I hope that you were able to at least enjoy it, and maybe even learn a thing or two. In any case, I hope to see you next time, goodbye.